The next video is in action Parliament for documents of the 1923 opposition and we're up to the Moscow party meeting December 11, 1923. The special conference of the Central Committee with signatories of the Platform of the 46 was agreed to by the Politburo together with the attendance of 10 leading party organisations. At this meeting on October 25th, 1923, Priya Bersenki put forward a six-point plan for the implementation of workers' democracy in the party, but this was not discussed. The meeting produced a non-committal resolution on the inner party situation, which the oppositionists present abstained on or opposed, while merely describing Trotsky's op October 8 letter and subsequent correspondence with the Politburo as a profound political error that encouraged groups like the 46. The 46 themselves were sharply condemned. For the moment that Stalin Zin Zinoviev leadership was seeking to isolate the 46 from Trotsky, in line with this resolution's formal acceptance of great workers' democracy, Zinoviev announced in a special Pravada article on November 7th that the pages of the newspapers would be thrown open to a public discussion on the party crisis to which party and non-party members alike could contribute. While Provider Party, while Provider published numerous articles and letters from all over the Soviet Union, often highly critical of the leaders' policies and the papers' circulation doubled as a result, the triumvirate of Stalin Zinoviev and Kamenev made concentrated efforts to conciliate the now sick Trotsky. The outcome was a resolution drafted jointly by Kamenev, Stalin and Trotsky, which set out the party's new course towards inner party democracy and economic planning. This resolution was carried by the Politburo on December 5th, appeared to embody the essence of the criticisms made by Trotsky, who initially regarded it as a partial victory in his struggle. For the triumvirate, however, the resolution was a manoeuvre to isolate the 46 from Trotsky as well as a formal concession to widespread discontent in the party rank and file. On December 8, Trotsky wrote a letter to the party meetings that he could not address through illness where he took the opportunity to elaborate on the Politburo's resolution. Here, his attack on the growing party bureaucracy and the old guard in the party went far beyond the tactical concession, concessions made by the triumvirate. He pointed to the precedent for such degeneration that was provided by the German Social Democratic Party prior to World War I. Meanwhile, the opposition led by the 46 broadened their struggle to win support for their platform in the party organisations. In this, they had some success, especially in Moscow, but Stalin, as head of the party secretariat, resorted to manipulating meetings and conferences to deprive the opposition of fair numerical representation. Trotsky, however, was reluctant to assume the op open leadership of the opposition while Lenin was still alive and the triumvirate still balked at directly attacking Trotsky, its most formidable critic. Thus, on December 11, at an important meeting of the Moscow Party organisation, Kamenev, on behalf of the triumvirate, concentrated his attack on the 46, stoutly defending the party apparatus, yet not mentioning Trotsky at all. But Sopranov, in his reply for the opposition, which follows, in both Trotsky's December 8 letter to party meetings to buttress his attack on bureau bureaucraticism in the party. Consequently, Trotsky's letter to party meetings and the Moscow party meeting of December 11 foreshadowed a new stage in the struggle of the opposition in which Trotsky was to emerge for the first time as a leader of the fight for the regeneration of the Bolshevik party. And that ends that instalment for documents of the 1923 opposition.